for being enrolled in the customer portal. How may I help you today? Okay, I'm calling because I have a question regarding um, the actual, just the contract. I have two questions regarding the contract and uh, the down payment. Now, um, before, uh, uh, I would like to let you know that I did talk to, um, I did talk to the dealership prior to signing the contract. And I talked to the dealership with my inquiries afterwards. And they've told me to reach out to credit acceptance because um, this is why it's good to understand the accounting and how they account for these transactions on their consolidated balance sheets. Because on their consolidated balance sheets, it's going to evidence a loan, not from credit acceptance to the customer or consumer, but that to the dealer that is important when it comes to actual liability on the account from them to me it was a loan from credit acceptance to them in which uh part of me purchasing the vehicle it was uh they assigned the loan over now um that's important because last time i spoke to credit acceptance employees they told me to reach out to the dealer you signed the contract but it's evidence that the contract is um generated by uh credit acceptance so it's under their approval so my first thing is the down payment now on a recorded conversation with uh uh the dealership the dealership told me that the credit acceptance would approve the financing and I will make a down payment in order to seal the deal. I asked the dealership, are you pocketing any of this down payment? And the dealership said, no, it's going to credit acceptance. Now, um, now, um, I looked on credit acceptance uh, filings with the SEC and um, the credit acceptance did this with the dealership because I'm under the portfolio program and the dealership has already said they don't offer in-house financing. This is why it's always good to already do your thorough research before you call them. So there's no question about the transaction that you're under. You don't need to call and see if they're going to verify what you believe you already know. And this would lead to frustration because we're looking for them to validate things that they don't want to and not going to. Notice how I told them I was under the portfolio program and there was no denials or words said. Because when you know what transaction that you're under, you can be assertive and keep the conversation going instead of being uncertain and looking for validation from people who have no interest in validating anything that they may potentially be liable for. A down payment from the customer, a cash advance from us, us meaning credit acceptance, and after the advance balance, um, um, net collections and the cash payments made on the consumer loans and costs and our servicing fee. It also revealed that credit acceptance is the servicer for credit acceptance auto loan receivables trust. So just to give you a little backdrop, um, the money was provided by investors in the trust and it was secured by my monthly payments of principal or income. So every time I make a monthly payment on my vehicle, it's not going to credit acceptance to pay down the loan. It's actually going to the investors who purchase trust notes from credit acceptance's trust. Um, and that principal interest payments goes to pay down the trust notes. So my question to you is, first, how is that, the dealership is saying that the down payment went to credit acceptance in the beginning. Then when I called them back, they never admitted that uh, 
they said the, the down payment goes to credit acceptance. They forgot they was recorded at the time. Um, and yeah, and second, that credit acceptance in their own words, in their own filings with the SEC, it says that the dealership receives the down payment as part of payment for the vehicle. So if I needed to pay $2,700 to amortize the contract, to you know finalize the deal, and I was, it was disclosed to me, and I have a recording of it, that the money's going directly to credit acceptance. But then come to find out, credit acceptance never got that 2700 The money also went to the dealership as part of the payment for the vehicle. So my question with credit acceptance is, how does that 2700 end back up with the dealership when it was presented to me that the 2700 was going to you all to cover the deal. This is a tactic that every good trial lawyer uses. They ask questions that they already know the answer to and the person that's being cross-examined or on the stand, they know the answer as well. And you ask the question which you already gave the answer. We already gave the answer to the question. So we asked them just to see if they're going to be honest. And when you put them in a situation like this, they have no choice but to tell the truth. And as you will see, or hear rather, that she has no choice but to tell the truth. Shall we proceed? So what you said it is correct. So, <laughs> so the down payment actually goes to the dealership to help qualify you to get the loan. Mm -hmm. We don't collect it, the dealership does, but it is a part of your loan. So okay. we don't get the down payment. This is why Thomas Legacy Equitable Solutions is valuable because we ask the right questions and we get the right answers. I did all my research to already know the answer before I even called these people. And that's the problem. You got people just doing what other people say, not really understanding what they're doing, don't know how to communicate, and then they get mad at the results that they get. This is why it's important to put sufficient time and research into this so you know what you're doing and they know what you're talking about so they're not going to play these type of games with you. But we have people with little experience in these fields giving advice like they're experts and people are taking what they say on face value. You just heard it, not from me, from her confirming what I already no. So how do you think this looks when I filed the tax forms? When I look at these amounts is already paid as taxes. How do you think it looks? Do you think they can argue that? This is why my group is viable and these are why the rates are what they are. If you want top-notch quality, you need to pay what's worthy of it. Not what you can afford to pay, not what you want to pay due to your circumstances, but this is it. Every other lawyer, securities broker, they're going to charge you way more than what I charge you to give you the same answers and the same results. This is why Thomas Legacy Equitable Solutions is valuable. This is why. All right, that's, I know that's, that's cool. Thank you. That's, that's, that's very important. Now, um, the actual loan is I want to refer you that the dealership in this instance says they don't offer in-house financing. So how can the dealership give me a loan when they don't give out loans? dealership if you like if you borrow the money from the dealership or like when the dealership you do your paperwork like you're making the monthly payments to them so because that particular dealership doesn't do their own financing they reached out to other financial institutions who do we are one of them that accepted the loan contract okay that's why you wouldn't make your monthly payments 
to the dealership, you would make them to us because we provided the loan. Now, I don't need to sit there and go back and forth with her at this part saying, no, you didn't make the loan. You didn't make the loan. I'm looking at all the evidence I need. See, most people are hotheads. They get too emotionally involved and they think that they're being lied to and it's insulting their intelligence. You got to remember, this is litigation. You see it this way. They see it that way. You don't get a, well, you're wrong, you're wrong, because I'm looking at it right here. Why are you looking at it? That's what most people do in these spaces who are really uninformed about not just the X's and O's, but how these people operate, how they're trained. This lady doesn't know nothing about the AK-10K phallus. So why am I going to try to educate her on something that wasn't part of her training manual? She goes by how she was trained. She's not going to take my word. And that's what most people do. They get into these bar fights over the phone with them. They get frustrated and then they wonder why they get nowhere when they're on the phone with these people. I get more over the phone with these people than most people get in writing. All right. So that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So um, uh, what I have here is coming from credit acceptance's own mouths. Uh, it states that when they do their accounting on their balance sheet, you know, the back office stuff, it states that on their accounting, on their books, that is going to be reflected. Uh, matter of fact, page 55, it says for accounting purposes, the transaction described under the portfolio program are not considered to be loans to consumers. Instead, our account reflects that of a lender to the dealer. And if you so happen to inform them of the true nature, you just, hey, this is what y'all say. This is not my position. And read off what they say, even though you know they're still not going to know. But you're just getting it on record. You're just planting the seed. And you're doing that just to let them know, like, hey, you're telling me this, but I'm actually going by what your own policy says. So that, if you want to enlighten them in that manner, you just, hey, this is exactly what says out of your own mouth. So you are making a point that even though you're saying this to me on the phone, whoever does your books are saying this. That twists them up. But you notice I'm not going to be like, well, you're wrong, you're wrong. I just say, hey, okay, well, your own accounting and credit acceptance, they say this. So I just use that to contradict what she's saying and she don't even know she's being contradicted because she doesn't know nothing about the ak-10k filing so i said that and i just left it alone so um it further goes to says that this is this is what took place ma'am i signed the contract the dealership transferred that contract to credit acceptance credit acceptance now had the proper collateral so they can issue trust notes to the investors the investors put the money up for my deal for the, the purchase price in exchange for the contract received. And I'm only doing this just to let her know that I know what's going on because she doesn't know about the AK-10K filing. I'm telling her and telling her in an assertive manner, like, all right, man, I heard what you said, but uh, this is what really happened. And I'm doing this really to educate her. But it was just more than just to let her know that, OK, this is how I see it in which where I will be making my monthly payments. Cool. No issue with that. The thing is, and your legal department admitted that credit acceptance never gave me any type of funding in order to even support a contract, which is not a big deal. Rather, they got my promise to pay the security and they was able to raise the funds for the purchase. So is it that that credit and this is their own words i'm reading it from the s in this file with the sec so um so is it more that credit acceptance really just acted as a broker between me the one that needed financing and the ones who's willing to invest but if you've had the experiences in the years of a decade plus dealing with all types of agencies and you were able to get the internal revenue service to admit to your position then these transactions, I mean, these conversations may go a little different because 
She knows she's not dealing with a regular consumer at this point. She knows she's dealing with someone who understands it on their level, which allows them to be honest and have the conversation with me. Now, whether she answers the question yes or no doesn't even matter because she is protected by the contract in her mind. But if she answers this question and confirms my position, then this is more evidence and it's evidence to everybody that's listening that Thomas Legacy knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to ask the right questions and any Thing that he submits documents on anybody's behalf or his own, there can never be a true rebuttal or a true denial of the claims presented because these questions are asked pursuant to the filings I'm going to file with the IRS. So when they confirm your position, that means your position is valid when you present them to the IRS in my contract. So you you all just kind of mainly were just the middleman to broker the deal instead of really being a lender in the traditional sense, like credit acceptors went into their own back pocket and put up the money. You kind of more brokered the transaction with your credit facilities and uh, financing capabilities and resources. Is that more of an accurate statement? Yeah. Well, I'll be damned. I be damned. That is a direct admission because she knows that I understand the internal accounting, the internal securitization. These are classes that these SEC instructors charge 15 to 20 grand for a four week course just for you to know the same thing that I know. And my seven series securities broker friend, he went to his instructor who deals with CDOs and mortgage backed securities. And he confirmed that I am absolutely correct and that we are absolutely entitled to the proceeds of all the money made on the back end. She admitted it. Now, most people, when I see them calling on TikTok, then you take my money, deposit to an account, went to the Federal Reserve, did. they don't understand the true nature of this. This is where the frustration lies. And this is why Thomas legacy is so important to these spaces. Okay. Okay. So there, no, no issues there. No issues there. Um, love my truck. Have no issues. There's no issues there. So how would I go about actual the down payment because if it's part of the loan the down payment really should have went to the investors who actually purchased uh put up the money for my contract um was the down payment more like just other types of fees and processing fees and you know other type of things that needed to be in order for the transaction to close rather than it just being a down payment on a vehicle as represented? No, the down payment is just that. It's just the down payment that you're putting on the vehicle. Okay. Um, is this down payment recoverable for the simple fact that whether or not I gave the down payment I don't think that would have had any bearings on credit acceptance accepting the contract because it, it didn't go to them anyway. They really didn't have a financial economic interest in the down payment. The value of this conversation, you can't even put it to words because this question and this dialogue summarizes millions and millions of dollars in down payments to which whether you make it or not, has no bearing on if the finance company is going to accept the contract. That is major. That's major. And this, these are the services I offer. Services that affect people's daily financial lives. Because that down payment can be a couple months payment right there. This is why Thomas Legacy is so valuable. Like, as long as you got the promise to pay, 
your monthly payments, everything secured. Yeah, check the credit. Yeah, check the income. I pr isn't that pretty much wasn't a big deal for credit acceptance? Or was that would have been the money that if credit accept if I didn't pay, would credit acceptance have to pay the dealership that amount? So it's kind of like we're going to move this off and just as far as the purchase price of the vehicle instead of us coming out of our own pocket to do it. Once again, this is major. She just admitted that these dealerships situated across America, they have nothing. I mean, these finance companies have nothing to do with the down payment. Wow. But the down payment is strictly negotiated between the customer and the dealership. Now, the dealership may recommend a certain amount to put down in order to help you uh, get financing. All right, but this is the only roadblock that I see with that is, and I have the recording of it. I can send it to y'all in a MP3 format that the dealership stated that you all required it in order for the transaction to be complete. But you're telling me that y'all really didn't have nothing to do with it. So that's the only reason why I did it on the premise that if I don't do this, credit acceptance may say, you know what? Nah, we're not going to do it. But comes to find out. Credit acceptance never had it, it. It really didn't. They didn't have nothing to do with it from the beginning. So, um, you see what you see where I'm going. Where that may raise a, a, a issue of the uh, the representations of the true nature of the down payment. Yes, I definitely understand. Yeah. So again, we have nothing to do with the down payment. Perfect. It's negotiated strictly between the customer and the dealership. Perfect. Perfect. No. 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 No issues there. No issues there. So. Um, are you familiar with uh, Credit Acceptance Funding, LLC, and Credit Acceptance Auto Loan Receivables Trust? For my members that's listening and everyone else, can you see how I'm directing this conversation? I'm always in control. I'm always leading the conversation where I want it to go. I don't let them, uh, I set the groundwork, I set the framework so we go down this road and then ask questions and let them give me the answer that I need or confirm. And this is why I ask, are you familiar with the securitization? Pretty much what I'm asking her, because there's no need for me to go down that road if she's unfamiliar. It's a pointless conversation. So I can't start asking her questions about the AK 10K filings if she doesn't even know what it is. But if she doesn't know what it is, then I will uh, instruct her to go and read it when she's off so she can familiarize herself. Because most people want to call and start talking about things that the person answering the phone has no idea. And they get frustrated when that person is standing on their position because that's what they've been trained to do. These are why I got called a whole bunch of frustrated people who get no results. No. Okay. Um, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. When you get off work, research credit acceptance, AK 10K filings. Um, I believe you will uh, be informed. But um, I have one more thing. Yeah, yeah, AK, 10K filings. Um, one more thing before I go. And this probably is out of your realm because I don't think, I, I, you know what? I'm going to bypass it because I know this is, not saying you don't understand, but I just know this is something that, this is dealing with taxes and the IRS and the county. And I know that's a total conversation for someone else. And for those of you who know me, you know exactly where I was going. You know where I was going next. I was going to the debt instrument. That finance charge, you know I was going there next. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was the, yep, that was the soften up for the overhand right. But since she wasn't familiar with the AK-10K, and I know she wouldn't be familiar with that, I decided not to go down that road because it would have been pointless and I don't have time to keep educating everyone who I talk to. So um, I just want to thank you for your patience and answering the questions and um, just get, yeah, just getting me, giving me more clarity. So uh, I thank, thank you for clearing it up. Thank you for clearing it up. Oh, it wasn't for clarity. It was for the new torch I'm going to light under the ass. That's what that was for. That was all just to check everything off my list before I filed the tax forms this November. That's all that was, a checklist. No problem at all. As you can see, 
this is just another example and evidence on the value of Thomas Legacy Equitable Solutions, where we go over the actual facts, the circumstances, the law, congressional authority, the X's and O's, accounting aspect, the trust aspect, the tax aspect. And then we transpose that in real life conversations with these people because when you can communicate it in person over the phone as well as through documents and still achieve the same results that is a beautiful thing and if you notice there is no mission of a birth certificate there was no mention of them going to the Federal Reserve to get the money. There was no mention of obligations of the United States. There was no mention of HJR 192. There was no mention that I'm the native indigenous aboriginal person. I'm a Moor. It was no mention on the Sesta K by trust. There was no mention of a social security account number. There was no mention of all these old sovereign citizen, Moorish American patriot groups who thinks that your birth certificate your social security and this secret trust fund account held at the treasury is going to be the answer to all of our financial problems as you can see i kept it strictly on their terms their system their accounting and how they do it in the public and that's the problem a lot of people try to act private arguments and make them apply to public situations the reason why people don't get results in the public because they do not know how to operate in the public while maintaining their private rights this is why my channel is so different from everyone else this is why I look at people who complain about the rates, always want something for free, always want a discount, then get mad when they don't get it. This is why I look at them with no sympathy because it's easy. The results, for a reason, the results are where they are for a reason because we actually take our time and not study the private rights of our own, but we study the public system, economics, this commercial system, and we get an understanding on how they operate. It's no use of trying to bring in your rights, your private rights, your remedies, if you have no understanding on how they operate. You can never defeat your opponent if you don't know your opponent's tendencies. Now. The answers I was able to get out of this agent today, which she was so nice. Shout out to that agent. She was so nice. The answers I was able to get when most people call places like this, it always ends up in some type of argument, some type of back and forth, some type of frustration. And then the conversation leads to nowhere. So if you like what you hear, please do not hesitate to reach out for services join the telegram group be a member and get things done the right way put your pride and ego to the side whether you like me or not that has nothing or should have no bearing on your decision we're here for results thank you for listening today ladies and gentlemen and don't forget to like share and subscribe we are over 800 subs Let's get to a thousand. Let's go.